video for Lesson 106B on my website, Introduction to Algebra, Part 3. Be sure that you've seen the previous two lessons on my website involving algebra, otherwise this lesson really won't make much sense to you. Okay, for this lesson I'm going to look at a problem that's a little bit different than what we've looked at up until now. It can be a little intimidating, let's just take a look at what we have here. We have 2 thirds times x equals 14. Recall that since I have no symbol between the two-thirds and the x, it means that we're multiplying. Okay. Now, right off the bat, many students just get very uncomfortable with this. It's important to understand that two-thirds is just a number. It happens to be a fraction, but it's a number. It's no different than if this had been 5x. Okay. There are two ways of solving this. Both will get us the correct answer, but one is a lot easier than the other. What we've learned up until now is that if x is being multiplied by something, we'll do the opposite, which we know is dividing. So let's take a look at how that works. Since x is being multiplied by 2 thirds, let's go ahead and do it in red. Since x is being multiplied by 2 thirds, I'm going to do the opposite, which is to divide by 2 thirds. Now, since I did it on the left, I'm going to do the same thing on the right. Okay, now already notice how this is getting a little messy. In a moment, I'm going to show you a much easier way to do this, but this does work, and it's important to understand it. On the left, 2 thirds divided by 2 thirds just equals 1. That means we can say that they cancel in a sense. 2 thirds divided by 2 thirds is 1. That just leaves us with 1x, which we know is just x. Now look at what we have on the right. As messy as it looks, we have 14 divided by 2 thirds. Let's write that in a more standard and clean way. I'm going to write 14 divided by 2 thirds. Okay, now let's keep going with that. We know that it's a good idea to rewrite 14 as a fraction, since we're now in the world of fractions. And we remember that the way to do that is by putting it over 1. We're always allowed to do that. 14 divided by 2 thirds. Now hopefully you remember how to handle this. To divide by a fraction, you multiply by the reciprocal of the fraction. So now we have x equals 14 over 1 times, remember our middle dot is times, 3 over 2. Now, we multiply across, but before we do that, hopefully you remember that we're allowed to do some, what we call cross-canceling. Basically, 2 goes into 2 once, 2 goes into 14 7 times. We now have 7 times 3, multiplying across, which is 21. And in the denominator, we just have 1 times 1, which is 1, and we don't have to bother to write that. So what we got is x equals 21. Let's just write it clean. Okay, let's check. I'll, re I'll rewrite the original equation. And here's my check value. 2 thirds times... 21, does that equal 14? Okay, now, since we're going to be multiplying a whole number times a fraction, remember it's a good idea to rewrite that, rewrite the 21 as a fraction. 2 thirds times 21 over 1, does that equal 14? Now, we can do some cross-canceling. 3 goes into 3 once, 3 goes into 21 7 times. Multiplying across, we have 2 times 7 is 14 over 1, which is just 14. Okay, so that shows that 21 is the correct answer. Now, we did follow proper algebraic procedure, we did everything right, and we got the right answer. Let's look, though, at a little bit of a shortcut, in a sense, of just an easier way of solving a problem that looks like this. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite, let's erase this, oh, let's see, I'm going to rewrite the original equation, and we'll look at an equivalent method, which is much faster and much easier. So, my original equation was 2 thirds x equals 14. By the way, it's worth noting that this x very often will kind of be written in the middle, just like I did here. You just want to keep in mind that whenever you have something like that, the x is really in the numerator. Just think of it as x over 1. It's 2 thirds times some quantity. Just keep, keep that in mind. Okay, here's what we're going to do. 
which is much easier than what we did before. First of all, I'm going to rewrite the original equation. You don't really have to, but it'll make sense in a second. I'm going to rewrite it because I'm going to do a little trick of sorts. What I have to say to myself at this point is how do I get rid of this two-thirds? I want x to be by itself, but it's being multiplied by two-thirds. Well, one little trick is that if I multiply by the reciprocal over here, make sure you see how the threes will cancel each other out and the twos will cancel each other out. And remember, it's not so much that they're canceling, but three divided by three is one, two divided by two is one, and we're left with, sorry about that, we're left with one x on the left which is just x. Now, since I multiply the left by 3 halves, and don't get intimidated by that, it's a number like any other number, I'm going to multiply the right by 3 halves. Okay. Now, so we're really done with x equals 14 times 3 halves. Recall that we're going to put the 14 over 1 since we're in the world of fractions. We'll do some cross-canceling. 2 goes into 2 once, 2 goes into 14 7 times. And just like before, we have x equals 7 times 3, which is 21 over 1, or just x equals 21. I'll skip the check because it's exactly the same thing that we had the last time. So the point to take away is that when we tried, in the previous method, when we tried to divide both sides by 2 thirds, that did work but it just got a little messy because down here we had to divide by a fraction, which ultimately meant we had to change it to multiplication and multiply by its reciprocal anyway. So do you see what we did? We kind of skipped some steps. We skipped that headache. Instead of having to work with division, what I did was I multiplied on both sides by the reciprocal. That allowed me to totally get rid of the two-thirds. And then on the right, we just had a simple multiplication problem. So whenever you see something like this, a fraction times a variable, just multiply on both sides by the reciprocal, and you'll get your correct answer. Be sure to see the upcoming lessons where we'll talk a lot more about algebra, and we'll start to get into working with signed numbers.